everyone. My name is Rachel Gordon, and I'm the Communications and Media Relations Coordinator at MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Today, I'm joined by AI and data scientist Cameron Hamilton, who recently found love on the hugely popular Netflix show, Love is Blind. He's the founder of the startup AI Alliance, which focuses on tailor-made AI solutions across all industries. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. Pleasure to be here. You're known mostly for your work in AI and data science, but you recently ventured into the world of reality television. Do you see yeah. any connection between these two worlds? You know, that's a good question. I think that Love is Blind is a special kind of show, and it's even more than a show. Uh, it's an experiment in some sense. You know, it's an experiment where the creators were interested in seeing, well, if we remove as I kind of said on the show, these confounding variables of physical appearance, ethnicity, race, background, et cetera, can people just make a connection based purely on the conversation that they've had? And I think I was drawn to the sort of experimental setup, if you will. Um, I was intrigued by it. I thought, you know, I just want to see where this goes and see you know, if there's merit to doing dating in this way. Interesting. Let's go back to the beginning. Were you always inclined towards the sciences? Absolutely. Uh, I always had a sense of wanting to know how things worked. And even more than that, knowing how the physical laws can be used to create new things. And I think that's what ultimately led me to AI, you know, how can we build solutions with what we know about the world and how things work. So I've also had this creative side and I think that's where the two intersect is, you know, wanting to create something, not just to understand, but to, to create from what we know. Interesting. So I understand from your bio that you were also once a firefighter. How did you make the segue from firefighting into AI? Well, so firefighting for me was a seasonal job where, you know, a lot of wildfires in the summertime and the early or late spring. So I did that during college and grad school as a way to kind of save up money for college and also to just have some adventures outside of academia and, and to do, you know, good to do something that would be a positive thing on society. Uh, so that was kind of my side of adventure. And I think that adventurous side of me also is what led me to do Love is Blind as well. And what question or challenge were you setting out to address when you started your company? Did you feel as though something was lacking in the field? Absolutely. Uh, one thing I've seen in the field of AI is when companies start to get bigger, they have a hard time moving course or changing direction you know they're kind of like a train on a track where they've picked up a lot of momentum and they have a hard time diverting course um, i wanted to start a company that was mobile and able to really tackle nuanced problems that these bigger ai companies aren't able to do um, and even more specifically uh, there are certain problems that i wanted to address. And that's why I started my own company. I wanted to be able to work on these problems. So my biggest interest is in Parkinson's disease. Um, I think there's a lot of room there for implementing AI to be able to do earlier diagnosis on the disease, potentially improve some of the treatments that treat Parkinson's disease, such as deep brain stimulation. Um, I think there's room there to optimize how DBS devices are used to treat Parkinson's. So those are some of my motivations for starting Alliance AI. That's great. I want to talk a little bit about digital dating now. Given that algorithms okay. are powering much of our dating apps and the focus there is largely on physical appearance, did mm -hmm. your interest in the show stem from a personal belief that perhaps looks are overemphasized? Yeah, so I was having that experience myself where I was using the apps and admittedly I was doing it in kind of a shallow way, which 
the apps kind of set you up to do where right. you're seeing the pictures of the person uh, or the all the people on the app and you're just clicking yes or no, I like them, I don't like them without really thinking about them as a person and there's thousands of people on these apps. So you're just kind of going through yes and no. And I, what I was finding was I was finding people who I thought were physically attractive, but when I went out on the dates, there was no real connection there, whether a shared interest or an emotional connection. So I was just kind of running into a lot of dating dead ends, as it were. Mm -hmm. So all the more reason I wanted to try this experiment out and see if, you know, removing physical appearance could be a, a positive boon. Mm -hmm. But do you feel that this structure possibly shortchanges some of the natural and biological aspects of attraction that really only exist in a physical space, like pheromone mm -hmm. transmission? Well, I think it would be unwise to deny that physical attraction is certainly a very, very important part of a relationship. Uh, we need it, frankly. We need to be physically attracted. Physical intimacy is a necessity in a relationship. Um, I think that we also need that emotional connection as well. So, you know, doing this experiment, it was a case where I was able to, well, let me put it like this. We were able to build the emotional connection um, for some, obviously when they got to see each other physically, that physical connection wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit of a risk to do it in this fashion. Um, but it, it did allow us all to focus on building that emotional connection at first, kind of as a foundation. Um, but I think both are needed that emotional connection, the physical connection being aligned on values, you know, how are you going to raise children together? Are your spiritual beliefs at least compatible enough so that you're not butting heads constantly, um, especially if you're going to raise children and, uh, you know, how are you going to manage a household together? So there's so many different things to consider when you're finding that lifetime partner. Mm -hmm. Did you entertain the possibility of disappointment if you weren't physically attracted to your fiance when you first met her? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, there's... In my mind, there was a very real possibility that we wouldn't be attracted to each other. Uh, either she wouldn't, wasn't going to be attracted to me or I wasn't going to be attracted to her. But I thought that, you know, since we have such a strong bond before we've even seen each other, if there's less physical attraction there than I would want, I thought there might be a possibility it could build over time. And I, and I think that happens. I think that if you love someone for reasons other than their physical appearance, you can build even such that you're, you become more physically attracted to them. Mm -hmm. I definitely yeah. agree with that. How do you see AI shaping the future of dating? We've kind of come a long way since the first iteration of OkCupid. Okay right. And there's so many apps that right. are tailor made to different preferences, but with all right. of your experiences, how do you see the future of that? That's a great question. So, yeah, I started thinking about the current state of dating apps and what I've seen and what I can assume is that they're using some variation of collaborative filtering mm -hmm. to underlie the algorithms there um, where you know, they're rating people and it's kind of a cold start problem at first where the app doesn't know the type of people that this person is interested in. And then they, the app starts to narrow down based on the history of who they've said they liked and didn't like. But I think there's kind of an inherent problem there where after using the app for a period of time, it starts to narrow the scope of potential candidates so much mm -hmm. that you're not exploring these people outside of that recommended uh, group of people uh, who actually may be a great complement to you or a great match. 
So that's that's something that I think could be improved upon in the future, and also perhaps an app that was able to look at a means for incorporating the emotional component of the relationship um, and finding someone who's a match there or, or these other factors that we mentioned, such as, you know, managing a household together, um, shared beliefs on family and, and finances and these type of things. So a more comprehensive app that was not simply looking at physical appearance, which I still think is very important, but also emotional connection and and uh, shared belief systems in uh, these other domains as well. So there's there's just so much to consider with a partner. Um, I think that that's the future of dating apps is is something that's more comprehensive. Mm-hmm. And after this experience on Love is Blind, would you recommend this format to other people? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would certainly recommend the Love is Blind approach. Uh, with that being said, I think it's all about you as an individual and how you go into it. Um, just like dating in any other format, there's a certain level of openness and, and vulnerability that you need to be willing to expose yourself to. So that's the main takeaway I had was if you want to make this work, you kind of have to go into it prepared. You have to go into it being willing to take the chance that you may get hurt and, you know, to be brave enough to expose yourself emotionally and and be willing to, to give it a shot. Right. Yeah. Pulling back a little more generally, where do you see the future of AI going five, 10 years from now, whether that's your personal goals or just more largely? Wow. Uh, so <laughs> the future of AI, as I see it, I think it's going to diverge from this vision that we see in science fiction, where there's some uh, maleficent AI that has a mind of its own and is taking over things. I think the real positive trajectory for AI is to, to think about how AI in human life can kind of integrate in such a way that the AI is only augmenting what we naturally do. It's giving us a better quality of life on a day to day, you know, whether that's improving the way that we schedule our day, um, whether that's cutting down the amount of time we spend doing sort of minute tasks or, you know, basically I, I see the future of AI is giving us more time to be creative uh, by automating tasks, um, allowing us to dig deeper by helping us to do research and helping us to be more creative in general and, and hopefully to be able to spend more time with other people and connect. All right, that's a really good point. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Do you have any parting words or advice for our viewers? Wow. Uh, parting advice, I would say, you know, if you're worried about dating, uh, to first kind of figure out what you want in a partner and, and really to dig deep and think, you know, what is it about my potential partner that I'm going to really need in the long term? And to be willing to be vulnerable enough to let them know who you really are, um, even if they might reject that. So that's, that would be my advice. Um, and on the AI front, for the general public, I would say to not be afraid of the AI and, you know, the future of it, I don't think will resemble what we see in sci-fi, like the Skynet and this type of thing, uh, that we need to start thinking about AI in terms of how we can use it to augment our day-to-day -day life. That's great. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for having me.